Sorry, so we have a motion to leave it uh, as amended. Call the vote on that. That can be used unanimously. All right, so moving on to item number one. We have with three presentation delegations. Uh, today we have our face to face with the Recreation and Culture and Master Plan. There you go. All right. Item three, presentation of delegations. 3A, our place and play, parks, recreation, coastal master plan. Tonight, 
uh, we have uh, Mr. Paul Suter with us, and I think uh, Mr. Russo is going to be here as well. So uh, we'll pass it over to you uh, to introduce it, and then we'll get into some questions and discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Tonight's discussion is obviously our places of play, recreation, parks, and facilities master plan for the City of Beaumont. The uh, purpose tonight is to discuss the draft master plan and for informational purposes and for feedback from the members of the committee. Uh, just a little background, uh, Council approved the Recreation, Parks and Facility Master Plan of 2018 budget. At the committee of the whole meeting, April 17, 2018, project chart was received as information. Then August 30th, 2018, an update was provided on the, on the uh, Master Plan for review, feedback and informational purposes. The committee of the whole meeting, November 20th, 2018, an update was provided on our places of play uh, for review and feedback of engagement sessions throughout the process. And February 19th, 2019, committee the whole meeting, what we heard report was presented as information for review and feedback. Uh, the, the Parks Facility Master Plan allows Beaumont to strategically guide and manage the direction of recreation parks and facilities services through to 2029. The plan will also provide Beaumont with the necessary public policy framework to manage its parks, open spaces, programs, events, facilities and amenities in a cost-effective manner consistent with the industry practices. I do have Mr. Russo here tonight. He has a short presentation that he would like to give at a high-level summary of the process to date and where we're at, if the chair will permit. Yeah, you're good. Mr. Russo. Thank you, Paul. Welcome, members of the committee. Okay. Yeah, it looks like a PDF document, so I think we're gonna we're gonna touch it for you as opposed to. Uh, I need to do what? I think we're gonna have to control it. For oh, okay. It's like a PDF document, not All a right. PowerPoint. I'll leave it alone then. <laughs> okay. Maybe if we could get to the next slide then. Might have to be minimized just a bit to for you to be able to see. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, so, we just want to take uh, some time here at the beginning to go through a bit of a PowerPoint presentation, discuss the highlights of uh, of the plan, so we're all sort of on the same page, and then of course lots of opportunity for questions and discussion. As you know, the project deliverable is uh, to provide direction to council and administration through 2029. The focus uh, is on the next 10 years, but certainly uh, some of the direction and vision described in there uh, will extend well beyond that into, um, you know, beyond 10 years. We're now in phase four of the project, so that's draft master plan stage. Um, and the second round of engagement is upcoming. And so today we're here to discuss the draft master plan and then phase five, of course, is the final master plan. As we know uh, from previous presentations, there was a wide range of community involvement throughout the establishment of the plan and uh, including resident uh, input and stakeholder group input, uh, staff input and your input. And others, so uh, we really uh, felt that we had a really comprehensive uh, understanding of what uh, the needs were in the community. And uh, you've seen this slide in previous ones, but it's been updated uh, throughout the process to date. We've we've engaged over 1,100 people in the process, so uh, we're really happy with that engagement level. Uh, 406 people in person engagements, that's one on one discussions with people, as well as 400 interviews over the phone. Um, so, that uh, I, I think is the basis of a lot of the discussion in the master plan. Out of the engagement process, uh, a few things rose to the top in terms of facility needs and program needs field houses, uh, arenas, performing arts center, and aquatics. Expansion certainly rose to the top in terms of uh, indoor facility needs, outdoor rinks, trails, sport fields and ball diamonds, um, amphitheater, dog park and green spaces rose to the top as, as far as outdoor facility needs go. 
And children and youth programming uh, was certainly uh, focused in a lot of the discussions we had, arts and cultural programming, and spontaneous use, meaning uh, drop-in use of facilities and programs uh, where you don't necessarily, or residents don't necessarily need to be part of a structured group and book something, but can come and drop in and do it. The plan spends a fair amount of real estate describing uh, what's going on in Beaumont today. It's such a dynamic community. Um, there's so much growth happening. It's important that, it, that the plan lays that groundwork um, because of uh, the, the needs coming forward. So the, that significant growth in use, recent years, the projected growth over the next 20, 25 years being the highest in the capital region, um, growth expected in Leduc County and South Edmonton, and um, also contributing to the current state, as well as uh, Beaumont having relatively high incomes and a, and a very young population with 26% of the population 14 years uh, old and younger. Beaumont has an extremely high uh, participation rate in youth sport on par with communities upwards of 30,000 people. And so that was a huge consideration too as we looked at what the facility needs were and the program needs. Through our assessment, we identified that uh, pro, uh, parkland acquisition was also uh, in a gap and needed some, maybe you just rewind there. And that the cultural offering is hampered by facility and resource limitations. The plan also describes uh, what tomorrow might look look like in terms of uh, what you're facing in, in uh, as far as challenges go due in part to the rapid growth. Uh, in the next 10 years, there will be significant demand for indoor and outdoor facilities. And in our view, taking no action at this stage would result in a, in a deterioration of your community's value proposition, which is a huge focus on quality of life. Throughout the whole process, we were asked individuals and community groups uh, what their vision was for the future of recreation parks and facilities in the community. And uh, we chose these words uh, specifically um, based on the conversations we had. We envision and inspire Beaumont, where family, friends, neighbors, and leaders, leaders encourage each other to celebrate life, follow their passion, come together as a community, and have fun. So in, in, in 10 years, we want to aspire to that. At the completion of the plan, Beaumont will be a hub for cultural expression, active recreation, and social activity for everyone in our diverse community. Our community will flourish as it cares for and enhances special places that encourage quiet contemplation, rejuvenation, and a deep connection with our natural environment. So that's what we feel will be different in the future. You're doing a lot of these things now, but uh, we, we think there still is lots of room for growth, and this is sort of the desired future state. The plan describes 10 guiding principles. These 10 guiding principles guided some of the action items in the plan, or all the action items in the plan. We're suggesting that, the, that you utilize them as you move forward in your decision making um, in, uh, in the future. And maybe just in the interest of time, we won't go through all 10, but there's some important things in there around equitability to access to facilities, integration of indoor and outdoor facilities, um, building facilities to last and built for growth is, is such an important part, and ensuring that the business planning uh, is, is in place and there's a recommended process for business planning in the plan, um, that support is provided to community groups so that those groups and citizens are engaged regularly. Uh, there's a higher degree of design and flexibility of use. Um, the enhancement of diversity and inclusion, uh, enhancement of the natural environment, and celebrating the cultural opportunities. So those were the top 10 that came through and guided the plan. There are two uh, overarching ideas in the plan. One is around establishing a cultural corridor, and the other is a recreation and uh, school co-located site. This um, map isn't really intended to be uh, really dissected here. It's an overall map of where 
the recreation school co-located sites could potentially uh, occur in the future. There's three identified sites. There could be others as you implement, as well as where the cultural corridor might uh, be placed. The next slide here uh, zooms in a little bit more on where uh, the cultural corridor would be identified and also uh, where a town square within that cultural corridor could be located. In terms of the vision for the cultural corridor, um, we see this as the cultural heart of the community, uh, attracting investing, investment and diversifying the local economy and creating a, a sense of pride around the community, a celebration place, a program space, and a place that really uh, identifies Beaumont. The vision for the recreation and school co-located site is to have a multi-purpose leisure center phased in over time. The whole uh, multi-purpose leisure center wouldn't be created, of course, within the time frames. Of this plan, but identifying a site where it would be phased in, in uh, and co-located with at least one school, maybe two. In that way, you can share amenities um, and phase in your recreation amenities over time. An example of that is the Shaw Center in Saskatoon, where there's a, a, a nice rec center in the middle of that image there, and two schools, one on either side. They're sharing amenities, sharing parking, sharing sports fields. So that co-location of site is the, is the other uh, sort of bigger, bigger item that we wanted to align in the plan. The implementation plan has 141 action items. Don't worry, they don't all have to be done tomorrow. Uh, across four functional areas, that's the way the, the plan is actually organized. And so maybe just next slide. Out of all of that, uh, we had lots of discussion with administration over what the priorities are recommended moving forward. And out of all of that, we, we came up with eight top priority items. Um, and the top one being land, uh, acquiring and sustainably managing land. Uh, given that you have a huge opportunity, a watershed moment with the annex lands right now, and all of the development happening in the future, your projected population growth, the school developments, there's there's a lot to consider there and that rose to the top by a fair margin as number one and suggesting that uh, you actually in the short term hire a parks and recreation land planner to really focus on that. The second one is developing a business plan for the new uh, Beaumont Sport and Recreation Centre. Uh, again, huge opportunity, the, the way this uh, facility unfolds when it when it opens is going to set the tone for operations for programs and facility development for years to come so getting that right will be important um, there's a host of new operational policies outlined in the plan that uh, came in at number three and uh, the, the facility development framework is an appendix to the plan that um, is part of that but also identifying the city of Beaumont as a partner in uh, delivery Number four was adding human resources to respond to growth. The top one there is up to three community engagement and program officers. We heard time and time again from community groups. Uh, there needs to be more communication with them, more support for them to help them do what they do, help them grow into the future and meet some of these emerging demands that are going to be happening as you grow. So um, that was came out in the top there in terms of HR, park staff additions as well a capital projects coordinator as you start rolling out and doing more capital project development, having out the side of the desk of an existing manager is not probably going to work. Uh, we had trouble getting data to support decisions. So uh, having adding a business analyst would be important as well. So you can have real time data for your managers to make uh, you know, real time decisions and have a dashboard for that. And of course, facility staff for your new facility. In terms of ex enhancing existing facilities, um, upgrades to sport fields like drainage is a big part of that and other upgrades that are kind of really needed, um, that it's all lumped into that upgrading existing. 
as well as parks and trails. We heard time and time again from the general public about outdoor amenities and parks. So this is basic things like shade, washrooms, uh, garbage cans, all that stuff. Most of it are quick wins actually that would uh, <coughs> residents I think would really appreciate. And then of course your facility life cycle planning for your existing facilities. At six is uh, building new high priority facilities. In the short to medium uh, term, we're suggesting uh, some upgrades to the existing community center to make them more um, user friendly for the performing and visual arts. That was a huge focus there in terms of establ uh, establishing new high priority facilities. Uh, a large scale indoor playground, which currently doesn't exist in Beaumont, also was a top one. Multi-purpose space for the existing library. Uh, we know that they're at capacity with their programs and they're doing some wonderful things over there in terms of programming. So expanding some space to be able to do that. An outdoor multi-sport court and an expansion of the trails. The next one is uh, planning for new facilities to be developed in the medium to long term and uh, so actually kind of more in the short term is this comprehensive analysis for ice surfaces and sport fields. Uh, we, we see this as uh, really taking a deep dive into what's going on right now. How much re regional use is there of ice and sport fields? Is that meeting the need to a certain degree when you combine that with your new facilities coming on board with your uh, enhancements? Um, and what creative ideas can, can uh, the municipality and user groups and the general public work on to increase the utilization and efficiency before you start building a whole bunch new. A feasibility study and a concept design location analysis for performing arts centers in this package of services. Uh, enhanced aquatic amenities at the existing pool and planning for the long term at the multi-purpose, proposed multi-purpose leisure center at the co-located site. We're suggesting leave space there for aquatics because you're gonna need it in the future. And uh, so that's that whole guiding principle around planning for growth. Um, building new, no, not quite yet. Building new uh, rectangular sport fields and baseball diamonds by 2029 as well as a performing arts center, one new ice surface and one new field house by 2029. And the last prior, uh, top priority here, and there's a bunch of other, of course there's a lot of action items, but that was developing program plans specifically on recreation, parks and culture for each one of those. And then uh, working on your accessibility for programs. The plan includes a 10 year capital plan that identifies order of magnitude planning or costs for, for capital. These are for planning purposes only. As you get deeper into this, you'll be doing much more detailed planning and getting a final point on these numbers. But uh, it gives you a sense of when these things might be phased in over what period of time and what they would cost in general terms. Next one is good. And then there's a operational budget impact analysis that looks at the operating costs of the action items in the plan and again phased in over each year and then totaled up uh, to 2029. So in conclusion the plan puts forward a strategic direction and detailed action items that will guide the community towards its vision. Um, it's recognized that the municipality is important and will, will lead a lot of this, but there will be, need to be a lot of collaboration with other orders in government, with your regional partners, with stakeholder groups, with residents in the private sector to make this a reality. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, so I've got a couple of opening comments and then I'll um, make a few statements just around the process of how I think we can uh, make sure this, this conversation here is successful tonight. Um, so first up, uh, a big thank you to yourself uh, and, and your consultancy group for, for pulling this all together. Um, some amount of feedback here from residents and user groups uh, that this is definitely, they, they felt engaged um, and uh, really, really happy with where that comes from. So thank you to you and also Mike to, to your staff um, for all the effort to, to go through and, and get to this, as well as our user groups and, and residents. I know there's a, a lot of effort to attend these meetings and that sort of thing. So I think uh, the proof is in the pudding here and, and um, 
uh, I think I can speak for for council here that we're we're happy with the, the product that is available. So <laughs> thank you for doing that. We've been waiting for this for a long time, um, but uh, yeah. So just a, a general thank you. I'm sure others will will jump in there. Um, the other thing I want to um, highlight here is uh, I think you know the the whole purpose of this is to avoid. Um, you know, we, we constantly hear from different community groups, residents about uh, we need to improve this, we need to improve that. And, and I'm proud that our council took the time to not just respond to these in one-offs, that we, we try to ground ourselves in a, in a master plan so that we can look at the long-term needs and, and make decisions um, in a, yeah, strategically as opposed to kind of in silos. So uh, I thank council for, for putting uh, that plan together. Uh, I think this is uh, really showing some some strong benefits here. It's going to help us growing forward in the community. Uh, in terms of how I want the discussion to, to go today, um, I think uh, it would be great if we, we go around and if there are any clarifying questions about in the report, um, we'll go through those first. Uh, so before making any statements or comments about you know what you think should be priorities and that sort of thing, let, let's go around the room and, and make sure people have a chance to, to answer any clarifying questions. Then we'll get into more of a discussion about um, uh, thoughts on, on how we move forward with this. Um, but a, a key thing that I think is going to be successful today to make sure that we set administration up for success here is a, a discussion around some of the, um, the short-term uh, needs specifically. Uh, we've obviously got a budget process coming up and I'd like us to be able to give some sort of direction um, to administration so that we can look at um, if there are a few key things that we want to do, uh, clearly a lot outlined in here. Um, quick wins you, you referenced, but if there are some key things that we want administration to consider uh, and bring back information as part of the budget process, I think we want to leave here tonight with that indication, um, not, not making decisions and approvals on things, but uh, a clear indication on some, some key things that we think we, we're looking for administration to, to prepare um, so that we can consider that as part of the 2020 budget process. So um, how does that sound for folks around the table in terms of a process? Okay, so we'll, we'll kick it off with uh, clarifying questions first. Uh, I know people have got lists of, of questions, but we'll, we'll go around and, and just open up the floor. So I'm looking at you, you're up first. Uh, I really only have one clarifying question on the plan. Uh, we are talking about stormwater ponds and bio ponds. What's the difference between a stormwater pond and a bio pond, and what will like, be the finished look? Because right now we have anything or any region from totally natural to manicured, which our residents like to use as recreational spaces. And so what would that do? Right. Our, uh, our landscape architects really saw a huge diversity. Like I think what you're describing there in terms of the way you're treating uh, stormwater management ponds right now. Some are fairly stark and really isn't much vegetation around, not much active or passive recreation around them. And others are, are, um, are done Quite a bit better i guess in terms of their ecological and recreational value so we're we're saying in the plan to sort of standardize that up the game overall and have uh, more vegetation planted more passive recreation like trails around the outsides of them and, and creating a situation that um, really has a higher ecological and recreational value is there a way to turn those stormwater ponds into usable water features for residents? Because I know that, one, that, that question comes up in third place. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get the safety yeah, talk from planning. But is there a way to do water features? Yeah, yeah, so like they can go swimming in or put a boat on it. Or, uh, what would make it safe enough to do that? Yeah, we didn't get into any great detail on, on, um, on that in the plan. So, I mean, that might be something we could look at with our landscape architects and include in the next draft. Okay. Council staff. Oh, no, I just wanted to, I can find it. But it's definition of storm ponds at the end. I, I was hoping for a clarification on the difference between bio ponds <coughs> and storm ponds, too, because I'm not quite sure what the, what the difference is. Um, and uh, there's a definition which I now cannot find. I, should have made a note. I, can, I can come back to you. Yeah. Councilor Barnhart. Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, as uh, uh, Councilor Marco uh, Swain has said, it's, uh, it's a lot of work and, and it does give us that big picture. So I'm going to stay up there for a while and, and get into the weeds. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> but uh, I understand all the questions that are going to come. When I looked at this, it, it was a bit overwhelming, for sure, in terms of like, 141 action plans, 51 initiatives, or something like that. It, it, it's huge. And it, it is difficult to not go right into the ones that we understand and yet take the whole thing under consideration. So the question I want to ask you is whether this size of a plan and this many details, a lot of it is catch up because we've grown so fast. Does it seem reasonable that, like from your work, I know you've done lots of municipalities, does, does this size and scope over 10 years make sense? Like it just, <laughs> I'd love to have all of that in 10 years, but I just, I mean, it feels like, you know, I don't think we can. Yeah, I can appreciate. I can appreciate that. It's a long document, and hopefully, it didn't put you to sleep. No, I stayed awake through the whole thing. And with your current staff load, no, it's not possible. But we are recommending a fairly, fairly significant bump in your and, administration. But that's again the question: Is that a reasonable expectation for a community this size, for a city this size? I, I guess from my other experience, I'm wondering if we're not taking what bigger cities have and trying to make everything available here, given the size of the community, I just wonder how, you know, is, is there some benchmark or some way we can look at that and, and rationalize why this is a feasible plan? Because that's, that's where I got caught up. Would you, yeah, I'll, I'll speak to that a little bit. Um, I looked at this plan in a couple different ways. One was the long range thought on the capital side for amenities and facilities and whatnot. But there's a lot of operational recommendations that live in here. And uh, strategically, and both strategically have been and operationally, we, there's a lot in here we're kind of already thinking about. And it really assists us just moving forward year by year. And I think we just work that way year by year as opposed to thinking the, the big picture of everything. Um, it's broken down enough in there that it gives us some steps and will really assist us when it comes to planning every year for budget. So I do think that on the 10 year part, capital wise, the big picture items, yes, it seems a little overwhelming, but when you break it down day to day, as we do in our departments, a lot of this is quite manageable. Just could I tell you, um, when you say, you know, and I know we're catching up because of the speed of the trip, um, Administratively, are some of those positions going to help in areas other than recreational parks? Or are these positions that you're recommending solely for this? Because again, that might help us in terms of seeing the, the bigger, bigger picture in terms of all of the other needs that we have. I think it opens a discussion for some of the staff we have currently. And some, maybe doing some, maybe some crossover there on some of these positions, some of the work that's outlined in here. And I think we have to look at that as a very good places. I would suggest that we would just have to go and hire a whole bunch of people initially. I think we have to look at what they're doing now and then where it ties into this plan. And if there is overlap there, how do we make that work? Yeah, my, my comment to that um, will be, and you, you made the point, it's going to take investment for sure, right? Um, and I think uh, it's not something that we can, you know, ask operationally, to, can you cut a little bit here? Because, like, we, we need to make a significant decision ultimately are we going to invest in recreation my, my personal opinion and culture uh, my, my personal opinion is, is if we don't we're going to we're going to see that growth drop off people if you, if you can't if you can't we can't provide the programming the arts facilities the sports facilities that, that we want here in the community people aren't going to come here or they're going to leave right we hear that constantly so personally i think i get it's a it's a huge and i'm not saying you don't i agree with no, that no, comment. I don't think we're debating yet. no but i I'm think just asking questions. yeah yeah so for me we we, we can't afford not to invest in, in this piece. Um, so I, I get I get the question. I appreciate their the, um, the response back as well. I would I would agree. It's something that we need to look forward to. Um, Council Downland. Well, oh, excuse me. Oh, sorry. Uh, just a couple of, um, bigger picture comments. Besides, good job. Um, a couple of times you've been before us in the past, um, I've, and I've commented a lot outside of. Um, you know, chambers as well. The engagement on this is is, is very well done. Um, the number of people and groups that you were able to accomplish and and get to and be persistent to make sure that you meet up with. I think that was um, as important as anything to make sure that we do get that feedback, not just we asked and they didn't respond. I think that was awesome. So thank you for that. That's one, two, two big picture things that spoke to me um, was the, the bulldog badging outside of its weight in. Uh, 
and supports enrollment, comparing itself to 30,000 plus uh, population municipalities. So that's both, you know, words. I've got a little chart on page 55 that says, you know, we have 1,236 enrollments in soccer, and Okotoks, who's 10,000 more than us, that's 1,265. You know, and the Duke with another 10,000 more has 1,000, right? You know, so those numbers permeate through. So that, that was uh, aha moment. I, Thought that that could be the case, but never would have seen the numbers come. It's dramatic, like yes. It is for sure. It is. And then the second piece that stood out for me um, it is a little bit more of a, a detailed thing, but just the the rectangular field and baseball diamond uh, deficit when compared to others. Um, you always hear that, and that was page fifty-eight. There's a nice little chart there as well. Um, you know, you always hear we need more, we need more, and sure we do, but when you you know, when you look at what other communities have there, um, you know, there's, there's quite a deficit when you, you know, look at those two lines. Yes, there's deficit on other things too, but, you know, that's just what stood out for me. So that's a couple of big picture things um, for myself and um, happy to get into the details when I'm ready for it. So, thank you. Council Dunlock. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Justin, again, thanks for your work. I mean, this, this report, I read it, I read it once very slowly, and it was overwhelming information. And when, a couple times after that, and it's lots of information. The biggest thing that strikes me, as the owner mentioned before, is that we are a very weak community, and that we have an abnormally high level of kids under the age of 15. And it, it speaks on these pages here that we, we can't compare ourselves to other locations because they don't have our growth problem that we have. Uh, and it's a very unique problem to be in. It's, it's a conundrum, right? Because as uh, Councillor Ben Nicker mentioned a moment ago, on that page 55, for example, uh, briefly, I'll get to my comment quickly here, is that, you know, 17,396 in 2016 versus Okotoks and the Duke at almost 30, you know, that their tax base is much bigger than ours they can afford to be, build bigger things than we have, but we have higher than even they have. So it's an odd situation to be in, so it's, it's tough for our council going forward uh, to figure what we need to do, but let me ask you a quick question on page 116 um, of the document, one of the recommendations, if I make it that quickly, is um, identifying some gaps in operational policies. Could you maybe expand briefly on the context? I've read it a couple times. I forget what you're referring to, but it's more of a programming type of uh, gap. You're talking here about, if I may, implement your record keeping system for amenities, uh, building space allocation policies, as well as um, that just addressing gaps in municipal stakeholders. So, can you maybe expand on what that, what that section is about in terms of gaps in community? Yeah. Well, at the present time, there isn't really a clear policy around allocation. So, uh, as to what types of group will get what facilities under what conditions. Uh, and as you continue to grow and get even more demand, there's going to be even more pressure upon the facilities. We also heard uh, from, from the public that not only user groups are, are wanting the space, but drop in like the general public. And definitely we see the role of the municipality to not only uh, meet the needs of user groups, but also the general public who were hurt through this process. So what at what stage or what priority does general public get on prime time ice, for example, for drop-in use First, or sport fields or the other facilities versus user groups um, and under what conditions. So there is some work to do there to really nail that down. Um, also some booking software and processes to make sure that the facilities uh, are used um, to their utmost and most efficient way. Uh, we did hear, we weren't able to verify this necessarily, that there is some open space out in fields, for example, that otherwise would be booked if there was a better system. And so that's where that came from. That was input that we received from user groups and the public. They're seeing open space that's not being used even in prime time. So there are, there are a few core policies that you normally a city of this size would have in place but you don't have it in place. And that's why the list is so long of to-dos. Get this help me clarify that, thank you. Oh, thank you for clarifying. Yeah, Council Scott. Um, I don't like to comment. General comments, or do you want me to go get specific? Uh, rather, gener uh, specific questions first, and then we'll get into the comments. Okay. Um, the specific question was, was the, related, was the um, stormwater bio part thing that I, um, I'm looking at page 17, 119 um, in Appendix F. Um, 
Appendix F is Parkland Acquisition Guidelines. And under point seven there, there's a limited number of park infrastructure. And the first bullet point says, stormwater detention ponds that preclude public use should not be considered park space. So, there is some scope in here for having stormwater ponds that aren't parks, but you alluded to as well the biome ponds with the work parks that had trails around them or whatever. Um, I'm, I'm, all I'm looking for really is a, a distinction between what constitutes a stormwater pond that is therefore not a it's not a biome pond or a recreational pond. You know, maybe in the in the next iteration of I can go back to the landscape architects and get them to explain that a little bit better in there for you for you if um, because I might not do it justice. So, um, in terms of the, the classification system, uh, the feedback we were getting was that at, at times the park the parks sort of got left over land at the development process. Yes. And that, that is the real driving force behind this to make sure there's high quality recreation land available, that it's intentional and deliberate in how it's being acquired, and that there's recreational and ecological value to those lands. Um, so, but if if uh, this, if the bio pond thing isn't explained enough in there, we can we can do a better job of that. Yeah, I think I, yeah. For me, I think that that's that's an area that needs a, a little more definition. Okay, okay. Uh, I got one one question that I have, Bill. Uh, sorry, Councillor Dalek and Councillor Barnard. Uh, you, you speak about a second round of engagement or the next round of engagement. Uh, so let me be clear. I think this this whole process it's going to be an ongoing iterative engagement process. Um, but I'm surprised that you're you're going to be entering into another round. So I wonder if you could provide some clarity on that. Like we, we've mentioned how much engagement has, has occurred before us. We've we've got this document here. I think it's time for council to start making some decisions. So what what? What, uh, what, what, are your, what is the intention behind that second round of engagement specific to the plan? Well, the original uh, project plan identified us going back to the public after the draft plan stage to touch bases uh, with, with the public to show them the recommendations and see if there's uh, any red flags or any, um, any major changes that need to happen before the final plan is developed. So this step here was to uh, review with council before we went back to the public and uh, showed them this. I mean, it's in your plan, I mean, it's public it's document public, yeah. now. So but before we go and have some discussions with user groups and with the public, and what will that all entail? Uh, was it originally planned to entail is pop-up displays at facilities like we did last time. It won't be near the scope. It's more of a touch base, yeah. uh, 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 pop-up displays, and maybe some discussions with any stakeholder groups that want to talk to us. Yeah, and thank you for that clarification. I, I think this is going to be an iterative process over over the ten years. Are we going to be checking in with the with the community as, as we go? Um, I guess maybe to get your perspective on this is a draft plan, but um, would uh, would preclude council from making decisions around some of some of these sort of things? Would that be a fair statement? It would be. Yeah, I mean, I think there's some things you know we need to do, and you're probably already working on. Uh, this is just a quick. Check, check in with the public. And, and I think you're gonna probably need to be doing that more regularly anyway, because there's so much in here, you're growing so fast. Like this is, this is, this is something we'd normally see this amount of activity like over maybe 20 years because of your growth, it expedites everything, right? So uh, you're gonna probably need to go back uh, a little bit more regularly than you'd normally see in a master plan yeah. and, and do those check-ins. And I think that's the key thing that all of council was interested in is we don't want to spend the time and money investing in getting this uh, and then having a good discussion here today, maybe a couple of follow-ups and then it's sitting in a, in a corner because I know um, Councillor Hendricks can probably attest to doing this around a few times. So trying to get some uh, interested in some discussion about how do we, your thoughts on how we keep this fresh, uh, how we keep going back on that. So I think uh, I'll save that discussion for a little bit later. I know my fellow councillors have, have got some comments, but appreciated your comment about the, the need to keep going back to the community. So Councillor Danlock, followed by Councillor Barnard. Thank you. Um, my question goes around to the actual engagement itself. And we, you engage over 30 organizations, which is phenomenal in the interest of it. goes to transparency, where we're trying to talk to everybody we possibly can. My question revolves around 
how are these groups engaged in terms of uh, how you engage their conversation? For example, um, the adult drop-in pickleball club, I guess we have one in town, I didn't know that until now. Uh, so when you engage them versus say the soccer association or the tri and swim club, did you engage them in the same way? Did you have, did you have three or four questions for each group uh, pre-done or how, a quick overview of how that was done and how you may see the second round of engagement would it be uh, completely, you may actually ask that question part of the already for me, uh, there won't be any sort of survey done, I'm assuming, but how were the first initial contact with these groups to make? Well, there was a letter that went out to stakeholder groups uh, outlining all the different engagement opportunities, including the group meetings, like the group stakeholder meetings, where we went through a presentation that described the process and then went into some questions around facility and program needs, and then sort of a swat around what's working and not working. Um, and some, and we also, during that, in that letter, we offered the opportunity for board presentation. So those groups that wanted uh, myself to come and present to the board, we made ourselves available to do that. And a few groups took us up on that. And we would ask we, the same, essentially the same questions, facility program needs. Um, and then some interviews as well. That we even made that uh, opportunity available and we did some interviews. Again, same line of questioning. So it was consistent. Good, thank you. Council Barnhart. Thank you, Chair. Um, just if you would help me elaborate a little bit on what is meant by in the vision and the division from the recreation plan about leaders, because it talks about leaders and doesn't really mention businesses. I'm, I'm wondering why the term leaders was used there. I think it was within the scope of this project. It wasn't something that was outside of page. Page 101. So it's the vision for the plan uh, for recreation, culture, and parks and culture. Vision inspired by all family, friends, neighbors, and leaders. I thought it was interesting, but I, I didn't know the thinking in my mind. We wanted that, I think, to be uh, broader than just municipal, but all leaders in the community to make it an all-encompassing statement around leadership, and um, and we didn't want to lose that part of it. But uh, what businesses included in any of the stakeholders? Stakeholder sessions? Um, were specific business groups represented? I'd have to check Chamber the. Of I'd have to check whether they attended or not. I have to look at the list. But, I don't the reason think I bring the it up is I think sponsorship is, is very important when it comes to some of the facilities we're looking at. And, yeah. and as well, the engagement of our, we've got great businesses that support our community groups. So I would like to see that if there's further engagement, they'd be involved. We're certainly invited. <laughs> I, I, sometimes it takes a little more encouragement because it's not necessarily in their, their business, but uh, I think they have a lot to offer in terms of helping and we Thank you. Councilor Scott. Thank you. Um, yes, um, on the subject of sponsorship, I noticed the example given in the um, of the school co-location site that that was the Shaw Centre. Thinking that there might be some sponsorship involved there, to even the example given. Yes, I'm, I imagine it's crucial. The question I actually wanted to ask was a different one, though. Um, the, last year, the Library Board presented to Council um, a plan or a, a a proposal, a study, let's say, for the expansion of the library, which, as you noted, is um, needs to be expanded fairly drastically in order to meet the, the increasing size of the uh, of the city as it grows. Um, and they proposed this, that building over there to expand that building. And, and I think they were talking about, if I remember correctly, about an eighteen million dollar expansion plan. I noticed that's not included in, or at least I can't find a reference to it in the document. Is that excluded? Because it would be a completely separate thing, or, or is there some reason it's not in the plan? Uh, within the ten-year time frame, I think that that study looked quite far out. Yes, uh, you know, like twenty years. Within the time frame uh, of this plan, we felt the, the what rose to the top was multi-purpose space to do more programming, and that was through this round of engagement, uh, like in, in terms of like a new library. Or, Fully expanded library, it didn't rise to the top as a top priority through our engagement. Okay, so that was a low priority. So if that changed in the course of the next 10 years, that would be something we would need to add? Definitely, yeah. I mean, you'll need to evaluate this every year, and some things will be added and some things will be dropped off, depending on the needs. 
because yeah, the, uh, the case was actually made that the library, as it exists today, is um, undersized for the for the population that it serves to meet the the library standards of excellence, which were set as a goal. So I'm thinking that we may have to reconsider that, the, 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 the prioritization of that. But it, just on that same one, I went looking for that as, as well, having sat on the library board during that time. And uh, 2A6 talks about supporting an expanded library space, which sounds to me like we would invest in this building rather than fees. And, and I guess that's something to be debated for sure, because if we're spending money on an expansion of we don't see the need for, we need to see the need for a new facility, then, you know, we'd have to have that debate. Or a second library, which I suppose could be one of right. the, so, the, the school site, uh, co-location type, type yeah. endeavors. Uh, that, yeah, that's, that's the capital cost assigned to that, I think, is if I'm reading the right thing, 2A6 was 1.2 million, so that's not the, that's not an $18 million expansion, no. So that's just for extra program space. Yes. Thank you. Okay, any discussion on the library? I know Council Steve Van Newkirk has a comment. Go ahead, Chan. Sure, sure. Steve, if you can. Sure. Um, can you talk to us more, a little more about the cultural cor corridor? It's a, it's a big idea put out at the beginning of the document, and then I think it it seems to lose steam as you go in, but I think it loses steam on purpose because it takes a whole bunch of bits and pieces to bring that cultural order to life. You have to speak to that a little bit, and I wonder if there's an example of something like that in action somewhere. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of there's lots of examples of excellent town squares and um, uh, zones that are identified for uh, cultural expression. Um, and really, it's about encouraging this mixed use development where we would it would, would be park space and public use space, but also uh, encouraging private development, commercial development, even residential, uh, all to increase um, the sort of cultural capital of the community, tie in with your brand to, um, for residents and for visitors, and to be a celebration space. Um, so around that could be programming, could be policy development, could be facility development. Certainly the uh, suggestion of a town square, uh, which is a central meeting space, and I think the city's already kind of proven the need for that in the silly city celebration and other celebrations um, where people want to be in your downtown um, and they see value in your downtown. There certainly is some precedent for that uh, in other communities and, and I think even in your community. So, it's really a multifaceted approach to uh, encouraging cultural expression in your downtown. Yeah, I, I like the idea of that. One of the uh, one of the challenges with that is there's already existing stuff there, right? And so it's one of those things that uh, changes over time and changes with time. And uh, you know, you can encourage you know business A, B, C, or wish that A, B, C would come in there, but it might not come to fruition. So. Um, I like the idea of it for sure, and I just wonder, you know, if we decided that that was something you're going to do, and if you try to roll on that, you know, there's a whole bunch of working that goes into creating an environment that will allow that to manifest. Because you don't just say this is what we're going to do. But there's so much that goes into framing everything to make this appear. Right. That's right. You don't just say I'm going to build a cultural order. It doesn't work that way. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there's a whole host of things that would need to happen for sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, I think we've um, <coughs> exhausted the clarifying questions on the report, and um, thank you for, for answering those. Um, but uh, as mentioned, we'll get into some of the more specifics um, that, that people have to to chat about. Um, so I'll open up the floor to any specifics. So I'll go to Councillor Van Newkirk. Um, sorry, I should, I should also um, comment that um, what we will do, what, how I'll try and manage this here is if you bring up a thought, an idea, a facility type uh, conversation, we'll try and close that off before we, we move on. So I'll ask for others, people around the room, if they've got comments, thoughts around that particular one, so we don't have to keep going back and revisiting it. Uh, and if you could just identify the page number you're speaking to, uh, it'd be appreciated. Go ahead. I'm going to start reading the document at uh, page 18, Master Plan Priority. Uh, start at number one on the acquire and sustainably managed land. Um, 
question I guess I'll, I'll pose to admit first would be, you know, what ability do we have to purchase land around us? Um, you know, when it comes to a municipality going to buy land, um, a lot of the land surrounding Beaumont, I will speculate, has a speculative value associated with it at this point, and, uh, you know, is probably above market value. Um, is this, uh, is the municipality even allowed to entertain thoughts of acquiring that land? That would be the first question. Council Revenue Kirk. Uh, Chair, um, certainly, uh, we're, we can go on the real estate market just like anybody else. Uh, there's no restrictions. Of course, we are spending the uh, taxpayers' money, so we have to try and get the best price that we can. Where there is a restriction uh, is in the sale of land. We're, we're unable to sell land below market value uh, without advertising. Uh, now, market value is very difficult to nail down. It's what you know, the actual worth as, as, as far as uh, uh, who sets that, it, it, it's tough. It's what the real estate market will uh, will support. That's right. Yeah. But there's no restriction. And it's the real market, it's expensive. <laughs> That's where it's at. Um, so that was, I guess, the first point I wanted to make. And then the second point around that is that, uh, you know, just to remind everyone, and I'm sure council recalls, but we do have, you know, we do have a piece of land that was put aside by the previous council um, that we're currently still paying for. That's the way things work, um, you know, to, to do. And we do have that piece of land. And we have uh, some land internally on the south side that was identified in, in the previous meeting. Uh, so, you know, so we do have some land uh, to do some things, but it was interesting to me that the number one priority was to acquire and sustainably manage land. Um, of course, that would be great, but I, I see this one being very hard to do. Uh, we're financially stretched and uh, to go and buy X number of acres of land is millions of dollars and, and uh, you know, we already have a five year and 10 year plan for it. So um, anyways, that's, I'll stop there, but it's, it's a lot. Yeah, and I, it's expensive. So that's, my two cents on, on that is I, I agree. It's, <laughs> definitely the priority but it's going to be hard to do so I think um, some of the shorter term things we can look to do is identifying the existing land that we do have um, and putting some capital towards that to helping the, the short term needs um, but definitely understand the need for that long term sorry John uh, your worship you want to jump I'm just going to call you first names from now <laughs> John. Sorry, well actually I was, I was going down this vein with the 80 acres that we already have and so I was really surprised actually when, we, when this plan came out and it talked about acquiring land when we have a perfectly good 80 acres that we already own, that if we programmed it correctly, we could put all these needs on that land somehow and facilitate and get rid of the need for there's a whole bunch of feasibility studies and other things that if we just made the decision as a council that that's the recreation, that 80 acres we're going to use for recreation, and we can start working on some concepts on all kinds of things the school, the, the rank, the uh, art space, and then phase that out over. 10, 15, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, um, that would seriously go a long way to jumpstarting it and it, it, it's utilizing the resources that we already have. So we don't have to go buy one. We don't even have to look at it. We have baby acres, which if used correctly, will satisfy these needs over the next 10, 15, 20 years. And so I, I was really hoping that we could, could uh, yeah, refocus this plan away from acquiring land to utilization of the acres that we have and how do we plan that out to maximize the amount of facilities that we've identified in the photos. That's my comment. Yeah, great, great comment. I, I'd like to hear Council's thoughts on this. I think everyone here knows, uh, we'll go to Council Hendricks next. Everyone knows um, my thoughts on this. So, you know, before when we were talking about the aquifer expansion, um, you know, we had this discussion at the time, um, Council wasn't there, but um, for the need to, to get it ahead and approved and the, the delays that that would take. But, I mean, the the fact that we have that land, I think, is is an incredible asset for us. Um, and so I think we need to, we need, I, I would agree with your comment about shifting the, that priority. And, and if we identify that as a council, um, we need to obviously engage the developers and all that sort of stuff that, that is out there and, and the infrastructure costs, et cetera. Um, but I would certainly support that conversation. Councillor Hendricks. Yeah, and I, and I take us back to the MDP that's already been somewhat approved and certainly the planning continues to go with that municipal reserve that we tend to get as part of our agreements with our developers and, and then how we match those up. And we do, we back, sometimes we back on in Mars, right, regarding the uh, area structure plans. Uh, uh, how did we get the, uh, the land with the uh, phase two is currently sitting on is essentially that way, you know, to acquire larger quantities of, of land. And we have uh, Plains Royal, that, that entire piece 
that's been uh, developed uh, through uh, acquisition of MR and money. So there's other ways to get uh, land, short of having to write a check. So, and uh, our planning department's, I think, is doing an excellent job making sure that, you know, we're not getting little uh, pockets of dirt in terms of land, but we're actually getting combined pieces to yep. really turn it into something. So. <clears throat> yeah, and, and going back to the land uh, west of town uh, here, I think, you know, when you when you see it from the map um, that is presented to us, uh, I can't remember the acronym um, uh, that we're at in terms from a planning perspective, but you see it and I've got the, the town kind of square hub and then a little bit down the back, but ultimately that a lot of that is chewing up in that 80 acres. Uh, and so if, if council thinks that, you know, this 80 acres is, is where we plan everything, um, uh, then I think we, we should start having those discussions earlier on so that we can direct planning to, to go that route. So would you be supportive of that, that those types of Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, uh, I think uh, with this planning document and, and yay, uh, thank you for this. Uh, lots of energy has gone into this. Hopefully this one will, will stick. This isn't the first one we've had where, uh, you know, the planning doesn't turn into the actions. This has to keep moving. Uh, this is either going to be a roadmap or an explanation yeah. at some point, you know, as to why we didn't get there or why we did get there. So we got to put the energy into it and get this done. And then we basically lay it out, we map it out in terms of timing, we map it out in terms of money, you know, and our growth, and, and hopefully stick with it. But of course, every council has you know, got its right to do as it wishes. And, you know, the, the, the previous document that supported exactly the same issues just didn't get followed. So, yep. and now we've got this explaining what happened to the last one. So we have to get started and start putting energy in it. So I wouldn't take any energy out of this. If it's 10 years, then let's go. Let's get this done. Okay, right. thank you. I, I got Councilor Step. One quick comment. I think it's a lot easier for, pre for the next councils coming after us to stick to the plan if we've already mapped it and put a phasing document together to get exactly that. Yeah. To, we could, yeah, give them a roadmap, they can't deviate. Where would it be hard to deviate? Right. right. Politically tough to deviate from. Politically tough to deviate from. Yep. Uh, Council staff. Uh, you got, and it becomes financially tough as well because you're, you're, you're going to have to spend some more money. If, if we can build all this on the land we already have, then, then there's, or, or mostly, then there's no need to acquire more land. Um, which basically I'd support what you suggested doing on the line we already had if we possibly can. Um, my only comment was then that, that, that that does then change some of the, the conceptual use diagrams for science and things, right? Um, a little bit, not all right. Like, the the drop well, stage of the plan is the place to be doing it, yes. so <laughs> it's appropriate that we do it now uh, if, if, that's, if that's the will of the council. Yeah, so we're going to have Mr. want to jump in? Maybe if I could just clarify, that word acquire doesn't necessarily mean buy. There, there are some dis there is some discussion in the plan about what that word means, and, and it could mean a whole host of things. It could mean your existing land that you have. It could mean trading land with other parcels. But I would caution against identifying specific locations at this stage. Location analysis is a whole another process, uh, and we actually have in the document um, some criteria on, on identifying locations for rec facilities. And uh, and so that that uh, there'll be need to be a fair amount of consideration there before you land on a location. So I think I think what you're hearing from council here is um, we we see the need for this. We've got the space, and, and I take your point. Um, but what we don't want to see is another 18 months, two years to plan this out, right? Like we we've got the report that says what we need. We've got some space, so. How do we turn this into an actionable plan? I guess is, is what what the what I'm hearing. The temperature of council here, and maybe this goes back to planning. You're you're right. You don't want you don't want council to sit here one day and say, "Okay, we want to do it there." You got to go through the process. But maybe you could speak a little bit about from your experience, and then I'll, I'll throw planning as well into this. How do we how do we take the conversation and the, the the direction that council is looking to go? How do you move that into an actionable plan so that uh, we give clear direction for administration to say, okay, when these things come up, this is this is where we want to put our, our time and capital. So thoughts on, on how the process around doing that? It, I, it, 
this the, the whole uh, document is going to be need, needed to be put into an operational plan yeah. that your administration is going to be responsible for and then bring to you for approval and my assumption is that now would you guys uh, no. no okay so how would how would you respond to that operational plans don't come to us okay um, well, your master plans are always high-level documents that have steps for implementation, regardless of what master plan it is, transportation master plan, rec master plan. Um, if you had identified that you wanted to focus on this 80 in this master plan, it would point to that being a priority to focus on the 80. To start looking at scoping out the cost of servicing and what you would put on that is a different project and out of scope for this project. So that's something that would be brought to budget with another uh, amount of money attached to it, and then it, we'd have some work done on that. Yeah, so a couple of quick comments. Okay. I don't know how I don't know how many of the user groups, residents would know about the, the fact that we own that. And so I think that's to be part of the reason why it didn't didn't come up. But clearly the report identifies we've got a lack of land, we've got a lack of infrastructure facilities, right? And so what you hear in council is saying, you know. We've got this space. Is it feasible to do that? So I appreciate it. We're not going to go back and, and edit this report to go into it. It's, it's a separate conversation. Uh, I'm looking for more of a, a discussion around how, how do we, how do we. Now you're hearing a bit of temperature around this. Obviously, a lot more discussion to have. But how do we turn that into an actual plan? You, you mentioned it's got to go into operational plan. I think you know that word has some different connotations. But how, how do we move that so that council can look at this and say, yeah, this is the direction we want to go. So. I, I fear that you're not going to get the answer that you're looking for in a master plan because the master plan is going to, like, if you choose and you say, hey, we think this would be a great idea that you want to explore more, then you could identify that as one of the action items, like at the top of the list that you want to look at as an uh, implementation of this plan. And then the next step would not be an operational plan. It would be bringing it to budget, saying that this is a project that we want to do in 2020, including costing it out. Um, it all depends on what kind of recreational facilities that you want out there. Like if they were simple uh, facilities with no water or sewer, that's a lot cheaper than if we're pulling water and sewer out there and then what that looks like, right? Yeah, thank you. And to, to be clear, I, I couldn't care less which document it comes in, if it's in the master plan or not, um, but you, you answer my question, that's the process, right? Um, and so that's another discussion that, that we can have. So thank you for that. Sorry, Councillor Barker. Just want to make sure that by perhaps, and I, I, I think the temperature is there to move in that direction. I'm not against that. But I don't want to lose sight of the needs of the existing community as well. So I, I don't know how to how to say it without sounding like I'm, I'm not trying to, to, to say anything different than what you've said already. But if land is needed, which I think it is, in the short term, to deal with some of the unmet needs, whether it be for football fields or soccer fields or whatever that might be, I don't want, and I'm only guessing that's why it's up number one, like I don't want that to not be addressed in the short term because we're putting all our eggs in this basket. I don't want this basket to be empty. So I'm just trying to balance that out. Could, couldn't agree more. That's a long-term discussion. There's definitely going to be a lot of short-term needs that can be identified early as part of this conversation. I don't conversation. want to lose it from this because I'm afraid if we don't have it in the plan, yeah. it's telling administration that's not a priority. And I, I think yeah. the existing community needs more. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, no, and I agree with you, but the reality is, is we either buy it or we wait for it to come from developers. I mean, for, the for, existing. for the existing community. So we, we're, we're kind of land crunched. Like, we just. Within the bounds of the, the non annex land. lands, is what you were talking about. Yes. And the, the stuff that's coming in the annex lands has to wait for development to come in the form of. to be subdivided to come in the form of the market. Um, and I think, I think we do have enough land around it within the boundaries that we could take care of some of them. But honestly, I think if we if we put as an action item programming that 80 acres in next year's budget, we can take all of these current needs. And some of it, like we don't have to build all the facilities all at once. We could build a soccer field in the ball diamond out there, which don't need sewer, don't need water, can get away with the gravel roads for a while and just and phase it over time. I think so what Council Barnhart is saying is that there there are some specific key action items that we can do here, upgrades to the CCBCC to help oh, from arts programming. Yeah, sorry, there, sorry. there is space yeah. here in the community that we can amend or change and turn into a ball diamond or what, however, right? So not losing sight of that. So I think that's yeah. that, that's one of the things we're going to do, but there are some easy, easy is the wrong word, there are some quick things that we can do here to, 
to supplement the need, right? Putting shade over some of these parks, right? Like you said, um, you know, just garbage cans. And these are the things that we don't want to lose sight of. If we put all of our energy into this, you know, exciting big thing out here, let's take, make sure we take care of, I think, was that what? Well, and, and what the mayor said is, is something, you know, I, I need to know. If we don't have, if, if we have immediate needs, we don't have enough land for, I think we need that in our strategic plan. Because, yeah. you know, the people that are here now deserve to have Absolutely. As, many, as many amenities as we can afford to get them. And that's what the rep is going to be. Not be waiting 40 years. Yeah. We don't have unlimited resources. Where are we going to put our Kevin? So that's so the, it's okay. a bit of both, is what I'm Absolutely. saying. Absolutely. Council Manager. Yeah. Are we still on that subject or do we have to go <laughs> yeah, I think it's worth asking. Uh, worth asking around council: Is this something that we'd like administration to to bring back as part of the budget process of what that would potentially look like? Yeah, I'll, co I'll comment on that and start something new after. Uh, so, you know, if we look at number one, it says acquiring and sustainably managed land. So we have that land. So I think the sustainably managed land part of that piece goes into. So planning um, for for that parcel and understanding what we what our needs could be in that space or something that we have to do. You know, we own, we own the land now. We're going to do something with it. Let's define what that something is. Um, if it is taking that that uh, you know that vertical piece and portioning it off and saying this will go here, that can go there, this will go here. This is a potential phasing. If we did this first, there's less services required. Services could come in year three for this facility. Like if we get a little bit of a roadmap of what that could look like. I feel it might help the discussion progress in a more phased approach. So that's you know that's how I'm summarizing what I'm hearing. Councilman Hendricks, right, and that's that's what we turn to the mid for and say, hey, how do we get there? Right? Yeah. Uh, and all the asks, the lower hanging fruit, all the items that are simple and maybe don't have a whole lot of money attached to it. To, you know, don't get after those. Things. So it, and then to your point, well, the infrastructure and all the parts and pieces that go with it, um, you know, we don't know. Our bid does, and uh, look forward to getting a report that kind of speaks to hey, well, this report is live and in color. What do we bring to the budget that we can handle immediately without issue? So, Bingo. so administration, Mike, um, do you have enough? For, you, you, we kind of talked around it a little bit here, but do, do you have enough that so you can go away and, 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 and sorry, Paul as well, um, go away to. to present this as, as part of one of the things, right? And we'll have to weigh up and prioritize it, but do you have enough uh, information for what we're talking about down in that annex line? Yeah, I, I certainly feel we have enough. I mean, some of the quick wins are very easy for us operationally for 2020, for example, whether it's the policies, the allocation policy, whether it's uh, for community engagement with groups and, and stuff like that, those are easy wins for us. Uh, and just this number one here, the way I read that when you look through some of the stuff that's in the green box, it's more of a strategic approach to any opportunity that may be putting rec space foremost, I guess, in your thought process, whether it comes to planning or acquiring plans or whatever would present itself, the opportunity, I think that's steering the vision to, to look at it that way rather than getting it as a, an afterthought, if you will, so we haven't got pocket parks or little invisible spaces going forward. It's a priority when you look at an area structure plan or a development plan, whatever it is, or that would be number one from our perspective. Okay, and I appreciate you saying that. That's your role. <laughs> I'm sure there are other people around here who want to top of the list, but I, I get that. Um, Mike? just want to build off of uh, what Paul was saying. Uh, if there are any specifics at this table that you want us to bring back, I, I hope we can identify those tonight, high level, or certainly earlier on in the budget, because if there's some one ideas outside of what uh, Paul was just referring to. When I look at, uh, as far as this plan is concerned, I look at this 10-year, very high-level, $100 million capital. None of that includes the acquisition of land, and none of it includes the uh, retrofits of Ken Nickel or the CCDCC over that 10 years. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a chunk of a price tag. There's yeah. going to be a lot of effort into raising funds for that. Yeah, so I think what you're hearing is that council would like to see something at budget about um, what it would take, what it would cost, resource, etc. For um, to, to plan out in that annex land, is that? And we'll we'll talk about you know whether we think the 2020 budget is the right time to be able to execute that. But um, is that is that a lot of work to, to be able to pull that together? I think that's a discussion that council wants to have, um, and whether we choose to go ahead with it or not. Um, sort of, do you mean annex land? Eighty acres. Eighty acres. Okay. Yeah. But what are you are you suggesting? Um, just infrastructure. 
like servicing? No, I'm asking, we, I think, how do I summarize this? Council's got an appetite to look at what are we going to do with that 80 acres there. Mm -hmm. We'd like a, something to come back from administration to say, these are some of the options. This is kind of the cost to, to go down this road further. Do you want us, do you give us direction? Do you want us to go down this road further? Let's put some concepts together. That's, uh, yeah, what you're looking at is a conceptual design, and that's going to take time, energy, and money. That's quite a big ask. Uh, that's what we're trying to clarify yeah. here. If it's a big ask, it's, what's the best way? We, we want to have this discussion, right? And if it doesn't, if it doesn't make it for 2020, right? Does it? Do and we, what we would have to do, what we would, we would do it is bring back a budget as, as, as a budget to do that. Yeah, yeah. 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 do that. The design yeah. phase through 2020. Yeah, we could do that. So, then we can have that discussion. As well. step 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 so I think what we're asking then is bring that back at budget time. Sure, we can do that. Yeah. Okay. Would we bring it back at budget time? Like specifically to able, I'd like you to be able to look at concepts for the okay thank you and then we can decide if we're going to spend the budget yeah i know there are a lot of short-term conversations but um i yeah. think we're, we're wrapped on that one did you were next council yeah, yeah. and i think it's a logical place to go uh, there's a budget cycle coming up and uh you know there are some you know number five i'm not gonna i'm not glossing over two three and four because they're all other discussions I'm going to have tonight, but I think the next discussion we should have is around the fact that we have a budget cycle coming up, and um, I don't want to uh, waste the opportunity to get some of the short-term wins identified and then move them forward. So, um, you know, I'd like to open up. I propose to get that discussion around here. You know, we heard from uh, the presenter from uh, Mr. Rousseau about, you know, some of the, the shelters, some, you know, benches, picnic tables, small shelters. Like a focus on enhancing our existing facilities, working with what we have. Um, you know, there are some amenities that were that are highlighted in here that residents have noticed that um, would be very helpful in the short term. And you know, to, to put a you know to, to say we we're going to allocate X number of dollars to do you know four parks upfitting. There's there's big uh, there's big wins in that for the for the community. You know, there you know all of a sudden we the usability of. Um, you know, some of the structures and places that people go to around town improves drastically. Um, how do we prioritize that? I don't know. I'd like to have that discussion here is, you know, what what are we going to enhance and what are we going to enhance it with? There's, this is full of ideas. Maybe administration needs to tell us what some of that looks like, but I'd like to hear, you know, sorry, I kind of sound like I'm chairing. I'm not meaning to do that, but I'd like to hear what everyone is uh, what's thinking the most around that. I have some ideas, but I'd yeah, so I, I would put back to you, you, you brought it up, so I'll put you back on the spot. Uh, in, in order for administration to bring, again, what we're trying to do here is give them direction to bring these types forward through the budget process, the 2020 budget process, right? That's what you're asking for. Sure, yeah. So um, uh, we're not going to go through and, and, and talk about every, do you want a park bench in this park here and a garbage can there? Yeah. Um, but generally, what were you thinking? Yeah, if, if we could pick, a, if we could target some areas uh, or some parks, um, understanding where people go and where people spend their time, and determine which the best the best places to invest that uh, capital in the next budget cycle to make some of the you know enhancements that were that were are outlined in the document. I would say, what are the best targets? Yeah. So would it be fair to say you're prepared to entertain a discussion, put aside a uh, a chunk of money to, to improve some of the, the existing infrastructure. That's right. You know, yeah. you know, be it, you know, whatever chunk we feel, we're talking 50 grand, are we talking 200 grand, 250 grand, you know, let, let's see what some of those targets look like. Let's target the places that people are going and the, where the most traffic is. And let's look in here for the details on what do people, what do people talk about wanting around the volleyball court or four seasons, you know, administration can bat that around. What are we talking about wanting, a, you know, this, this park or that park or, you know, what suite of things can we do if we bought 10 of these to provide shelter or shade and install them around the community? What would that look like and where do they go? And what's the cost associated with that? Uh, it's probably easier to do it in, in lumps than piecemeal if you're buying, you know, structure A to go and put around the community, right? So look to administration for some guidance on that. Others, are there any thoughts on some capital for upgrading existing council dialogue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I agree with people's comments from Councillor Ben Newkirk and also of Hendricks. I mean, I don't want this document to sit on the shelf and nothing gets done in the balance of our term in the next two councils as well, too. So I think we're, our council is free to make decisions, and most have been pretty good, a couple not so good maybe. But uh, on the whole, I think we're not afraid to make decisions. I think we're going to take this document and make some firm decisions. And on that note, 
I think it's, um, as Mr. Mitchell mentioned about doing some short-term things, I don't want to call them short-term wins because sometimes it just sounds like it's easy and just get it done because it's easy. Uh, but I do think there are some viable options in this report we could do in the next, in the fiscal year 2020 and improve our community. I want to talk specifically about uh, the arts community. It's been underserved, I think, fairly well, obviously in the next number of years. And your report made a very excellent suggestion, I thought, to uh, retrofit the CCVCC facility. I'm on that committee on council about trying to make that facility more functional and uh, more in the community. And uh, you mentioned approximately $250,000 in our renovation, which would include, I think, was lighting, uh, sound equipment. I mean, I'm picturing uh, putting a stage in there that could have performances, visual and art performances. Could you expand on uh, discussion you may have with the arts community about this idea? Did it come from them? Is it coming from you, the suggestion? If it is coming from you, do you think the arts community would be interested in that? Because a facility down the road is showing you 2029, so that's 10 years from now. But I think if we could retrofit the CCBCC now, within the next year easily, I think with that number figure, and give the arts community something they can, they can embrace and take advantage of it and be useful for them. So how did this suggestion get into the report? Uh, yes, it about. came from an interview with the arts community, with the arts groups, and um, so our arts consultant, um, uh, Karen, she worked with them to determine what the short-term needs would be, what, uh, you know, understanding that, you know, multi tens of million dollar building probably isn't going to happen tomorrow but what can we do in the short to medium term to meet some of the performing and visual arts needs but while at the same time uh meeting the broader needs for rentals and everything like i think even if you did transition into a performing arts center in the longer medium to long term those enhancements that you make uh would be uh I guess marketable to a broader audience and even still to the arts community after even if a new building was built. So um, th those discussions happen with the arts community. So I would suggest though um, further engagement to determine exactly what's needed there, um, in, you know, in the, in the short term. But um, that was the budget number we worked we worked on, and it, um, in our opinion, would would meet the needs. But I think. Some more specific uh, engagement on that on that renovation would be needed. So to, to be clear, uh, our role here, and, and we're not making decisions on budget, but we're trying to provide direction to administration to say, yeah, we we, we think generally that there should be um, budget coming forward in 2020 that includes these renovations. Not to pick, we're not going to pick and choose what those renovations are, but allocate that funding for you guys to go away and do that work. So, um, and I want to get back to Councillor Van Newkirk's comment in a second. We skipped over it, but. Um, yeah, the, I guess I'll, I'll open up generally the, the, the thinking around that suggestion um, from council here to, to invest some short term um, in 2020 some capital uh, into that arts piece. Just quickly, co comments on, on that? Yes, I mean, I was second councillor now there on that one, but absolutely. Um, if, if we're looking for quick wins, um, and yeah, I don't want to gloss over points two, three, and four, but five and six seem to be the obvious ones to me that will yield a quick win for, well, the financial amount we'd have to decide, but without budget time. But that certainly seems to be the biggest scope. Those are all identified needs. Um, and, and very obviously, the, um, the retrofitting of the CCBCC, which um, to provide a performing arts facility. The, the thing that strikes me when I look at the um, where is it? Page 58, the, the, the ratios of the various facilities in other communities versus the population. Um, the thing that strikes me straight away is that there's two, the, the Belmont supply is at zero. And one of them is the indoor field house, which we've already addressed, and the other one's the performing arts center. And you look at Fort Saskatchewan, Duke, Cochrane, Overtones, they've all got a performing arts center and we've got nothing. Um, that, that's an obvious deficiency. Uh, that we could correct, that apparently we could at least go some of the way to rectify it quite quickly and, and affordably. Yeah, I, I, I would support the discussion of budget. Um, we're going to have a whole list of items that are going to come in front of us. We're going to have to to have the more detailed discussion. But I'll support. Yes. I'll support bringing that forward. Is anyone opposed to? Okay, sorry, um, Paul, you had a comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was just going to comment that perhaps if uh, that particular item could be uh, when, when the 
engagement piece comes back to the public, that specific item could be addressed with the arts community just to get some more feedback specifically if that was a before you go to council. If I may on that comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good suggestion, Paul. I guess my only thoughts might be um, asking administration to, in the budget deliberations coming up, maybe do some costing on what this number you had, 250000 where that came from. I'm not too sure how fast the, the engagement will have with the public before we get our budgets done for 2020. So I'm sure it's kind of in the near future, but I want to maybe, sorry, I would request that we ask administration to give us some ballpark numbers on what the initial discussions were, were with the arts community and this report saying, you know, if they, for example, want to stage lights and sound system and the ballpark is 250, could we get some verification? Not verification, some guidelines at budget that that's a reasonable number pending public engagement and arts community having some more input. I want, I want to prefer that they kind of went hand in hand. I'm not too sure how fast the public engagement will be finished before we get our budget deliberations going. Just as an observation. So I think directionally, I think you've got what you yeah. yeah. Sorry, but just a quick question. That, that number of 250,000 kind of reminds me from my time on the CCBCC board that the baffling and the sound attenuation is almost that about that, just for that one. So I'm just a little worried that that's not going to change the, the recent facility. Sorry. Yeah. The quotes are 100, 120. On so it's, a, it's about half of that yes. now. So. This would be open above that. But, uh, but I think this is extra too. Yes. Yeah, and, and so I want to I move us on here. We, we don't want to get into the specifics, but generally I think council is, is yes, bring that back at, at budget time from an arts to improve the arts. Any, any other specific comments that, that folks wanted to dive into? Well, we've already addressed, we've already brought forward the, the, the expansion of the trial system, or, the, or rather the completion of the trial system. As to what was planned as an item that we already wanted to consider. Yes. So, yes. To, yeah. Go ahead. Do it. So yeah. So yeah. No. That that they're already working on that. Um, so that, that work is going to come back as to what what needs to be done. It's going to sometime later. Um, items two and three. Well, I'm hoping that we're uh, items two, three, and four develop a business plan. I know the administration's working on the business plan right now and programming. Uh, implementing new operational policies. Well, Paul has addressed that on for us. Or should be addressed that for us. Um, and they've already said, in terms of how additional human resources, they're going to do an evaluation of their current staff and see what action needs to be done. Yep. We still have the report. So I'm pretty happy with that. So it really leaves us just item six and eight. Yep. Yeah. Can I just add on to yeah. what Mayor has said about the HR number number four? I really like seeing the support for the volunteer members in the community. And I think you probably heard that in the consultation big time. Uh, I think that's well worth our investment because I volunteerism needs help. You don't just put people in the room and say, do you want to We need to have a strategic approach to that, to provide the help and hear from them, but on a ground level. So. I really do appreciate that, and I think that's for me one of the high priorities with the number four. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Support the, the operational piece. Um, you know, it doesn't get the. It's not the sexy thing we go, but I think that that's what really builds up the infrastructure of the community. So, I would certainly support that. I, I would assume administration. Um, or oh, I shouldn't say that. I, uh, I think administration has, has heard that support, and, and you'll be bringing back some of that as part of the budget process. Um, so, definitely support for that around the table here. Councilor Van Newkirk. Yeah, just backing up a bit. Does uh, the administration have the detail enough to, to act on number five there. We, you know, I kind of introduced it, we batted it around a bit, and then we kind of shifted gears there over to CCBC, just the enhancing existing facilities. Um, what I was suggesting is, you know, get it, get some targets together for, you know, to enact some of the, um, you know, well, improvements around those, some of those facilities and, you know, propose some stuff um, to, get, you know, to tighten things up and make them more attractive for, for guests. Is there anything more that you need from us on that? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. Okay. Unless there's something specific. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Just want to clear. Okay. And then uh, I will back up one comment. Councilor Barnhart there on the uh, human resources and growth. There, there's a real. Uh, so the comment that Mr. Russo made earlier about um, space and or fields in prime time being not used. I'm sure that the process we have in place is, you know, have someone working hard to do 
everything to the best of their abilities, but I'm really looking forward to some space planning uh, resource uh, to make sure that we are making good on all the prime time usage for our facilities and, and all of that. So that, you know, I've heard that from a few user groups, so, you know, that's going to be our hard sentiments on that one. I think that's going to be an important piece, so thank you for that. Yeah, and, and so I'll go back to my earlier comments here. I want to be clear that we're not just saying, we don't want to leave administration with the thought that we just said yes to this document and execute on $100 million, right? So um, uh, can we, no. Uh, so from a priorities perspective, I think we heard, the, we had a good discussion about the, the, the cultural center and what we could do there. Um, you know, the, the trails piece is coming back, I, I, I get that. Um, are there any other specific type, um, Facilities that, that people um, wanted to, to discuss to make sure it was included in that, that 2020 piece? Just to, when, you, when you said about the administration again, one of the things I, I would like to he see or hear is administration's response to this document. I, I don't know if that's incorporated yet. Like it seems to me this is still coming as your document, but I don't know. Have, has the input already occurred and now it's collectively your document, or is there? Are there some concerns that administration might want to raise now or later? And I'd like to hear those. If, if this is not doable in 10 years, part of me thinks it's not doable in 10 years. But if, if administration agrees with me or thinks it's doable in 15 years, I'd like to, I'd like, you know, to, to hear some of their reaction to it because they know the reality. And it doesn't have to be now. Yep, no, it's a when it comes back, there's an opportunity for us to have some reality check around what is affordable given the tax base we have. Yeah, it's a fair projected to have it because we're going to continue to fair question. To, to be honest, I assume that this was done jointly with the administration throughout the process and you wouldn't be putting it in front of us if you didn't support it. But maybe do you want to clarify that? Yeah, the steering committee was made up of administration, various people within the city and uh, we're comfortable with this document in its current form as far as bringing it today. Um, obviously it, it's ambitious, if you will. Um, However, some, as we mentioned earlier, some of the stuff is a quick way, some of the smaller stuff. Some of the stuff we're working on now in the background and have been for some time. And the council will see some of that at, at budget time, potentially. And tonight will give us a little direction. As the master plan, it would help just to see if there's anything that jumps out tonight that, that is not supported so that we can take that back and then further, because this is the draft master plan, so it's obviously the finalist that has to come based on any changes that are proposed tonight as well as it may come through the community, going back to the community. Um, but we're comfortable with uh, conceptually what's in there for sure. I don't know if the reality will roll out exactly as it's laid out here, but I think it gives us the blueprint to go forward. Thank you, Mr. The, the format of this will be different when it comes to a finalist at this point, right? It's delivered like it's from a consultant. Like all of our other master plans, we have school development plan. It then becomes Beaumont's plan, so the consultant stuff comes out. Um, there's also uh, that we still have to discuss. There's some operational pieces in here that typically we wouldn't bring to the council in the document. So you may see some of like the staffing volunteering to stay like strategically, but the staff and stuff to come out uh, because otherwise it makes it very difficult for you to approve this document because then you're pre-deciding what your budgets are going to be uh, moving forward. So some wording will, will change in that regard as well. But that was the comfort I needed because I'm used to seeing things in a much more wording way rather than into the detail. Like this is a combination of implementation and you said that. And I understand we, we got to catch up. You know, so moving quickly is, is fine by me. But I do see, you know, the principles I can totally agree with. You get into this detail and then I want to see all the other detail that we haven't seen yet in the rest of the the city's budget, so, you know, that's exactly Yeah. Just thank you. No, yeah, good, good question. And, and just a quick time check, we're an hour and a half in here. I'd like to see if we can get out of, uh, out through this item in the next 30 minutes. We'll see how ambitious that is. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll move forward. We've got Councillor Van Newkirk and then Councillor Stout, followed by Councillor Danilo. After I got through the meat of pages 18 to 25, I flipped through and I found the capital plan in 2019 dollars to see, you know, what was what are this plan is proposed in 2020 because that's the real, that's the stuff that's coming. Um, I had a pretty big smile when I saw install an RV dump 150k 2020. Um, and you know, but also in there is you know, upgrades to wall islands and such. Um, question to administration is uh, the collaborative effort to build this document. Did the administration have the input into? Uh, the 20 in, into this capital plan at 2019 dollars uh you know 
right now, what I would expect, you know, based upon what I've heard around the collaboration, is that we'll see these items in the 2020 um, or the upcoming budget cycle. Is that is that fair or is that uh, not correct? Uh, potentially, uh, what you're seeing in the 2020 year could come forward for sure, unless there's something that comes out of today's discussion that would include that. Yeah, sorry, we had that in this page 220. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I, I think I would have questions around that, um, you know, and maybe tonight's our discussion for that, but, you know, 200K for an indoor playground, and, you know, even the 150K for an arena, you know, all those kinds of things, you know, but I, I look forward to those discussions sure. at budget, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, the, I know you want to those numbers are not uh, hard numbers. We have broken them down to detail that those are items we're going to pursue and right. we will have detailed numbers and, and, and design. Yeah, and locations and all that. But, yeah. So I would like to have a more specific conversation is, you know, you brought up the indoor playground, the RV dump versus the need for the bull diamond person. So I think in order to, uh, uh, otherwise the administration is going to look at a whole bunch of things that yes, but like, are there things in here that we say, yeah, we want to prioritize this and we're not making decisions on budget, but we want you to, bring back more specific costs. What is in that capital plan that, is, that isn't that is there for 2020 um, that you would like to see as council or, or what is in there that you probably, that you don't, that you don't think is, is a direct priority for us? Is that a fair question? I'll start it off. No, you're right. no Go. for me, I think it's more that, uh, and I've seen this happen in the past with the, uh, we have the consultant team that comes in and provides us with uh, input the admin provides us with input um the council's recommended it somewhat and uh, ultimately uh, debates begin and things don't get done so uh that would be my concern uh, i understand the package of reddit i understand it i like the capital layout is it is it to the uh, to the nickel absolutely not i get that um but it's a plan and uh, the last one wasn't followed Hoping this one will be. <laughs> let's let's at least get to the first budget cycle and uh, <coughs> say that uh, we're going to say yes to what admin is suggesting can be is doable and uh, start moving things around. We move everything around, and uh, uh, that turns into just a lot of issues that uh, we don't fully understand how the consult team got here with all the discussions and the meetings and everything else. So I'm very happy that it's here. I'm very happy that it's coming to budget. I'm very happy that we can debate the, the budgetary issue at the time. But that's where I like to leave it. I wouldn't want to start moving it around. Okay. There, there, for me, there are a couple of things in here that aren't um, in the capital plan that I'd like to, to have a discussion about. But um, I saw Council Danilak's hand up first. So. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So if we're looking on uh, number five, Existing facilities are still there, I, I understand. So, if I, I may, yeah, sorry, I have six okay, thank you. Uh, if I may, uh, Justin, in, in the report, uh, the existing football field behind the high school um, recently came to my attention. I wasn't aware of it fully that it's actually city property. I always thought it was part of the Blackwell School Division, but it's not, it's actually city property. And uh, at the present time, <laughs> football, their home fields actually in Miller Woods. They can't play on the fields in Beaumont because it's not up to adequate safety standards and and what the school board determines and what the Beaumont amount of football league that they're part of requires them that for a home football field. So there's also people play rugby use that field, now outdoor lacrosse use that field as well. But it is city property and so it's our responsibility to maintain it and prove it as necessary for the freezes of our community. Question is it's not in your report uh, at all. I'm not sure if you were aware of city property. If you weren't aware of it, that's that's fine. Uh, if you were aware of it, it wasn't really part of any recommendations on the, on the, on the facility. So the question I may have is um, for administration, for budget, if we could um, have a part of a budget process coming from administration to, to council budget, uh, recommendations, uh, ideas on improving that field. Uh, there is talk of possibly using uh, making it into a turf field, which would be a 2025 year field. It's not inexpensive to do that, but it makes it feel very viable for a number of different user groups or what our plan may be to upgrade that field and make it much more manageable in terms of safety for the players as well as making it an actual field our home teams can play on. Um, 
that's something that's come up from you know, other systems around the town that Beaumont's lacking in that bigger area. Football, field hockey, you know, rugby, and lacrosse on the open field. So I'd like some discussion with, with that particular field, if I may. Yeah, Councilor Hendricks. Your Worship, uh, or Mr. Chair, uh, that specific item, of course, uh, uh, has gone through uh, quite a process, uh, including a full design, full track, full seating arrangement, uh, football field style type drainage requirements. Uh, uh, there was a, uh, the last time we went through that process, we were working with the school board and school trustees on this. Um, certainly the school trustees had talked about us getting together yet again with this council to talk about, you know, priorities and things that we can work together on. That was one of them. And uh, I know we've talked about meeting with our school trustees. I'm sure this would be on the agenda. I think we could just resurrect the entire consultant package for that design. And uh, it, it had been costed once before. Um, we could bring it back and get see where we are today. So. I think that's something that could be addressed in the master plan as well, not just the yeah. budget. Yeah. Well, that's something we yeah. need to address. So it was, it was a previous plan already done? Yeah, yeah. track and field. In fact, uh, full track. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, so my, 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 my two cents on that is you, you listed off a bunch of sports, um, and so obviously it, it, it helps the football program. Um, it helps, you know, the, the rugby program after school going out there. Um, but the other things that it checks off out, outside of this is a safety perspective. Uh, the field is uh, pretty unsafe right now. Um, it's rock hard. Uh, I know the people who play and train on it, they don't use sections of it because they're worried someone's going to run out. So um, from a safety perspective, I think that's something that we really need to invest in. Uh, but also from, a, um, you know, we're, we're trying to be out there, trying to encourage people to come into Beaumont. Um, I, I think, you know, having the football team playing here, um, being able to host games here, you know, that, that just brings in people into our community as opposed to them going out and meeting up in the woods and people spending their money in the woods. So it, it checks off so many boxes uh, for me. Uh, I think this is one of the things that I would like to see prioritized um, in the plan um, is and, and doing this properly. I think there is an opportunity to get significant revenue back in um, for, from renting that field from, from surrounding communities. Uh, if we if we do it right, we spend the money to, to retrofit that field, AstroTurf, uh, properly. Um, so I think, to me, this one checks a lot of boxes um, that, that's not in here. I, I would like to see that um, um, concur with Council of Danlock's comment. Uh, there is definitely a discussion with the school board. Um, the number one thing that was identified was a lack of space, land. Well, this is land we got, right? And we can dig down and retrofit it and, and clean it up. And I think it'll be a, a huge addition to our community. Um, so I certainly support that. Um, and I'd be interested in other people's comments around the table. Totally support it as well. And it has come up many times. I've raised it. I've had the safety issues raised. Um, I don't, I can't remember the last time why it didn't get where it needed to go, but it, it did have something to do with the cooperation. And that, when you say we own the land, but they are using the land. So I think there's something in there that we have to get through. Yeah, so the, the school itself, the school proper, and the high school is sitting on. Um, municipal reserve. Well, yeah, municipal reserve is a section for school. Uh, Four Seasons Park stands on its own. And then, so. The, the win was that we put the school onto that field so you can back onto it and use the entire park, not just for football, but yep. they also do so and all the rest, right? So, yep. So, yep. Yeah, I'm not going to. Yeah, everybody said they got the council board. Okay. And, and the one thing I would add is uh, it's not just uh, not to rely on uh, administration here. There, there are several people in the community who have got a lot of experience in this. Um, and. Uh, want to volunteer their time to help, and this is the same with anything. I know that goes down a, a, um, a, an interesting path for administration, but I think we want to make sure that we we make we offer up opportunities to help um, folks in the community who are passionate about this to, to be involved. And, and this goes for everything, um, but sports and rec committee for sure is definitely the the, the way to go. Um, so I guess I've, I've said my piece on that. It, it sounds like you've, get, you've got seven nods here um, that we would like to see um, a, a detailed, maybe that's too specific a word, but some sort of plan um, on, on how we could execute this um, uh, for, for the 2020 budget cycle. I'd like to have a discussion about how we pay for that in a second here, but um, any other comments on that, that particular space, Councilor Benyuker? Yeah, just very encouraging that uh, there's already Stuff together, right? yep. and uh, I wasn't sure that's news to me, and I'm happy to hear that. So I hope that I hope that helps you.
process to have a fruitful conversation of budget. Yeah. My, my, my comment, my final comment on this is let's do it properly. Uh, there are various levels of astroturf that you can do um, uh, for the football slash soccer field um, slash everything else that you can play on that field. Uh, I think there is huge value in, in spending the money and doing it right um, and, you know, the, getting that high quality to attract um, people into our community to rent that field. So uh, looking forward to that discussion. Um, in terms of cost, obviously that... Um, that uh, we don't know the numbers and we're not going to find out the numbers here today, but I'd like to have a discussion around how we propose to, to pay for that. I, I think clearly identified in this report is that recreation is a, is a huge um, uh, a huge deficit in our community. Um, and so there are, there, are, there are ways that we pay for this. We've got our, obviously our federal gas tax. We've got um, uh, significant reserves uh, in, in different areas. So um, without getting into the specifics, I'd, I'd be interested in having that conversation about where we think administration could potentially pull from to be able to pay for this in the 2020 budget. Yeah, and not to get into the weeds, but you know, uh, we, we also had the, you know, the baseball guys in uh, years ago just hey, throw some lights and then we can you know, play dark later into the night, right? Uh, because where we are, so they, we had a couple of fields that we looked at and priced to see if we could get some lighting in so that there's more than one game that evening on, the, on that diamond, so some of the schedule. If you're starting to get into funding sources, we're starting to get into budget rates. So I think you're no, what, coming down into... So what, what I'm trying to get here, I want administration to have a clear direction on, on how they think they can fund this. They, they, we, we know that we cannot fund this 100% through, um, through taxes um, and tax increases because I don't think that's going to be sustainable. So maybe I'll throw it over to Mike. Have you, have you thought about options on, on how we could potentially do this? What I would suggest is we bring back uh, the, the plan with a budget and a budget source yeah. on where we believe that money can come from, whether it's I've got all the reserve balances in front of me right now and I figure out which way we can make this work, we would come back with some options. I certainly didn't see it as being 10% tax increase to, to pay for that stuff. I see it being predominantly reserve and grant funded, but let us develop a strategy for that. Yeah, I guess my, my comment then, with that, if we don't want to get into the discussion, I, I would like us to, to take to see what we have in the reserves and, and from a grants perspective, and, um, and and I know you're gonna you're gonna dive into that, so I, I appreciate that. Council Dunlap. If we're done with that, I got the next topic. Done on that, Phil. Thank you. If I may, thank you. On this conversation, but I'll just forge ahead for a moment. So on this idea of, of uh, item five, existing uh, facilities. It's not existing, but it could be. Um, I just got clarified if it could. The land east of the Colonial School, it's been a municipal reserve for a number of years. It's been sitting there. A couple of school boards have um, dibs, if you will, on building a possible school site there, and nothing has happened. I wonder if we can update council potentially on where we're at with the fact that the school boards are going to relinquish that land back to us, let us use something for it. Uh, it could be another ball diamond. It could be... Uh, a rather large park, it could be all kinds of things, but right now he's just sitting there empty and it's been there for a number of years and the school boards aren't building a school there. And so I like an idea if we colonial school to give them one last shot and say, you want this or we're going to change designation. Uh, yes, we do do that. We send a letter to the school board and I appreciate, uh, if I, may. I appreciate the answer, uh, Ms. Raymond, and I won't take any more council time on this big topic today. I have some opinions on, on that, of course, strong ones, obviously, but I understand the process, and it's been a long time. I, I get that, but 
Um, part of me says we are, I mean, it's true, we are somewhat landlocked in many ways. So a piece of land sitting there not being utilized is, is frustrating. Um, we have user groups who can use it for many different things. Uh, so I won't have any more, more on that particular topic today, but I do appreciate the, the answer to that. And hopefully we'll have them commit themselves soon to we can use that land for a higher purpose for ourselves. So uh, I may go down that road further because okay. that's an important discussion. But I don't think kind of dominate, but yeah. So I'm going to push a little bit further, and um, you know, I'd like to know when they're going to come back to us with a plan to use that space. Um, you know, yeah. we, we we need to we need to get something going here, and um, I think it's the easy thing to say right now is that we're not willing to really push that space, um, and I think we're done with the easy answers, or I'm done with the easy answers, and. I want to see a plan from when, from them, and you know, uh, when, when are they going to come back with the plan to use that space? Is that a realistic option at this point? Maybe it's a question for a minute. Well, it, it, okay, go ahead. Then I'll ask. So, Please. Switch back. School sites are not the official funding numbers. Funding needs to come from the comments. And until that does happen, maybe something will happen in this next budget cycle. But the funding <coughs> hasn't existed. Partly because the current home school board was looking for a larger site than we actually had available at the time. Frank kept noticing that we didn't have a site available for them. They did amend their house and actually allow them to go on a smaller footprint. Now we are actively working with them to find a more suitable location. I know that part of the house direction that was provided back to Justin and his team was to look at some of these different options for the park. I know that they have them examined and you can but at this point, because a lot of these things are over now, we are pushing, we're working with them, we're pushing to get decisions to be made relative to these things. Thank you for pushing. Uh, Mike, you wanted to say something? No, that's good to cover it. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I think we've got a budget coming up here, a provincial budget coming up here um, in a month or so, or a couple of weeks. Um, I, I would like us to re, re to get back into that into that conversation. Uh, I guess the question would be uh, if uh, if that site, if that particular area somewhere in Colonial, uh, I think where Council of Downlake is going, is um, there is an opportunity there. They're not going to use it, opportunity for a different um, use, whether it be ball diamond or what, what have you. Uh, have you looked at that and if that space became available, I still struggle with that, but if that space became available, what would we look at, <coughs> at, at placing there from, from your perspective? Yeah, we are looking at that space for sure. We've been seeing what could fit in that space, whether it's a ball diamond or a soccer field, for sure. That's part of our uh, implementation piece that will come subsequent to the master plan as far as the playing field allocation and locations throughout the community. Okay. Councilor Barker, you want to? Well, you probably already know that we all agree we need schools. So for me, that's yes. I would like more baseball diamonds, etc. But schools can get the money to build a school when there's land. I, that is a priority. We can't have not enough schools. So I, and that's, these are those Murphys, you know. Clauses. I think, but they're holding us. They don't want that spot. They're holding us hostage. Well, they have their in, in lieu of a better spot. So. I get stuck with, I'm like Councilman, I get stuck when they're starting to hold us hostage to try and negotiate a better position. Like, if they don't want it, it's not going to be their needs. Yeah, we'll let it go, and we will work with them to get the spot they need. I'm not like, privy to those conversations, so I don't know if they're holding us hostage. I'm just saying, from my point of view, schools are important, so it, it's not, I don't want to pick between a ball field, and I know you're not saying that in a school, but we have to win those as well. So I guess the, I, I, I don't know on that point. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll be less polite as my colleagues because I'm, I'm frustrated as well with the situation only because I'm aware that the school boards have said this is not big enough to build a site for a school. Now, they're in, they're in the capital plan to make it fit. That means they've got to go vertical. They can't go any wider for the school, right? The question is when they go to a second and third story school, it doesn't matter to us, but they've been having that land for well for 10 years now and have done nothing with it. Um, and it, it is schedule funding, I get that, but they basically have already stated that the land's not big enough to build a school, so sitting in limbo. So thank you, Mr. Raymond, for pushing, and I do appreciate you pushing even harder as best you possibly can, but it's something I don't think. It's on our, it's on our radar for sure. And schools are important, yes, but it's okay. been 10, 12 years and nothing's happened. So. I, I'm going to move us on here. Yes, um, uh, good discussion. Uh, we'll wait to hear, hear further back uh, on that. Um, any other specifics around the community that, that people, um, I think one that stood out to me was the, the multi, multi-use multi outdoor facility uh, that we had right now on the, on the reservoir there. 
Um, there was a potential suggestion to move it kind of next door, um, and I think just over 500k in the in the capital budget um, plan to um, to add a new one on there next door to that. So I'd, I'd be interested in some discussion about that multi-use um, outdoor facility there. Or maybe I'll go to the mayor because I know he's very passionate about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we already have like we already have the budget to just pick it up and move. And I and Mr. Chair, can correct me if I'm wrong, but I know that we've been having some discussions with Bob about wanting to. They want they have some money to put in towards border ring that could be possibly done. We talked about locations with them and Chance Row and some other things. Um, I think the what you're the facility you're talking about needs a much bigger piece of land than just picking up what's there. So. And that's where I want to go. I'd like to have a conversation about that. I've seen them be very successful and, and hear from the user groups and individuals about the success of those multi-use outdoor things. But again, it's uh, you, you need to invest the 500K into it as opposed to the 50K to, to, to jump it over. So, um, Councilor Van Uker. I have just a point on that. that my question is very similar. Um, I think we have 50K in the budget right now to move it over and it's a carryover. Uh, my question was around does this have to come back to us a budget now because putting boards around it uh, makes it be on the 50k you know? i think that's probably what happens but just looking for some clarification for a bit on that not that we've waited and changed our minds i think it costs more but just comments from it yeah a rule of thought that we provide our, our administration is that if you have a start of the project the project goes back into the kitty for the next year so it's not automatically carried forward if the project is started we call it ongoing in this case this project won't be started so the scope's going to change. We'll rescope it and reestimate it okay. and bring that back. So I'd like to pull on more about the the mayor's comments about you know working with the user groups you mentioned, Bob. Um, how, how realistic is it to have that conversation about where that potential site could be um, coming up into the into the for the 2020 budget cycle? Mr. Chair, it's very realistic. I've had conversations with them, and uh, they're just taking it back to their membership to see if it's still the project that they they want to fund. That's what's okay, so I think I think you've got a lot of nods around the table here that we would would, would look forward to, to seeing um, a potential solution for that. Yes, go ahead. Mike. I just want to add. Uh, let's not put ourselves to, in too tight of a vice here on timeline. We can put a placeholder in the budget with details to follow and subject to council approval later on. So if we can't get all the public consultation, we can't get a design in place by the time we approve the budget. Well, we can just put it on the shelf. Yeah. We'll and still get it done in 2020. That's thanks for the time. Yeah, put it on the shelf um, and still get it done. Yeah. We're talking a, a month before we can finish scoping and then. Yeah. So I, I guess I think what you're hearing from councils there are some sh there are some short term things that we'd like to see in the capital That's budget. You're, you're hearing that from us. Um, and do we need to see the full design in place by budget? No. But the general concept, yes. Councilor Van Uker. Um, just staying on that same stride, but uh, a little bit of a different ask. What I've seen in some other communities. And I, I, if it's in here, I missed it, but sorry, Justin, is uh, some portable boards used. So right now in our municipality, we have kind of the, the dirt berms that contain the water for making some sheets of ice. Uh, but, you know, those aren't contained or constrained by any boards of some kind. I have seen other communities where they'll take a flat piece of land and they'll have some boards that run for winter and flood them and then use them. And then uh, when it's time for them to come down on thaw, um, was any of that idea included in here? Until, uh, not uh, level of detail. Yeah, yeah, we already had 140 action items. We do another 141. So no, we didn't actually look at that specific yeah. idea, but it's not. It's so not that's going to happen. To be by some by some members in the community around that, and so um, that would be something that I would I would like to see costing back on uh, in this budget cycle is uh, what it takes to you know purchase that section of boards and a good quality set of boards that it is, you know you can put up and take down and flood it out uh, i'm not saying that we need five of them you know but it'd be nice to have at least under, understand what the cost of putting one of those sets of boards up would be so i don't know what the council's appetite is for that but i think that is a um keeping kids from chasing industrial banks for bucks. Yeah, so that, that's one angle. The other angle is for those of us who can't stop and need boards to hold on to. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, um, speaking from experience. Um, so, yeah, my, my, my thoughts on that, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see that. I don't think that's too much of an ask to, to, to bring back for us to see how we could um, prioritize some of the, we, we do have those uh, facilities around and it'll be good to see what, what that cost would, would do. For our community. I appreciate that it's pretty detailed tonight, but I think that if, if we get it on the table tonight, then at least we can get looking for what that's going to be. Okay. Thank you. 
I just can't yeah. discuss this. Yeah. Just, just wondering if we've covered enough. There's a lot of detail in the whole parks and open space area. And I don't know enough about biopods and other um, issues. And I know there are concerns about that. So I'm just wondering, this doesn't really tie our hands in any way. It's more or less going in a direction. Yeah. More will come back with detail. Is yes. that, is that yeah. an assumption? I, I can, at this point, based on what's here, say I agree or disagree with some of these plans. I would agree. I do have one comment about the parks and trails piece. Um, and it ties into the into the dog park um, conversation. Um, I think it's you know there is uh, a significant need for you know we'd love to have the Twilliger dog park in our community that we but the reality is we don't have that space. So I'd like us to entertain a, a conversation about using some existing spaces as a trial run, um, knowing the need for um, to be able to have some off leash spaces. I see other communities around the capital region. Who, who do this, they kind of turn parks in, some of them turn them in, into off-leash spots during the winter when there's less kids and stuff running out there. But I, I'm, I'm interested in seeing if council has an appetite to, to see if we could identify a couple of sites in our community, some parks, some existing trails, uh, where we could uh, potentially trial off-leash uh, this winter and, and see, see what comes back with that. I think that would, that would help, obviously, the, the, the dog park need. It's not the ultimate solution. Um, but I think I'd, I'd be interested in, in having that conversation here about how we could use some existing trails and parks to trial that run. Councilman Um The first thing that comes to mind for me is the engagement we did around the contemporary dog park to where we got right now. And there were a couple of other viable spots at that time. And I'm surprised they weren't selected at that time by residents, but they weren't. Um, so that might be a good place to start. Um, you know, looking at the viability of those two sites, about which you know, engagement has already been done on, because then we don't have to go out and remap and re-engage because we've already we've already done that. So much of those other two spots, so like might be an easy spot, easy place to start. So what what I'm talking about is not fencing a uh, putting up a temporary fence. I'm talking about using an existing trail and saying, okay, around kind of this particular area, this park, right in the winter, you can throw your ball for your, for your dog, right? And, yeah. and I'll use the one just because it's where I go by, um, you know, that space by the Purple Slide Park and Colonial yeah. Park, right? Like, is that, and I'm not saying that's where we're going, I'm just saying, using that as an example where people are constantly walking their dogs in the winter, it's beautifully um, maintained now um, along those trails and, and folks in the winter, particularly with less kids, do we give that a trial run some of those somewhere in the community to look at that and get some data on that, right? Another concern is, well, people aren't going to pick up for the, after themselves, safety, all that sort of stuff. But to me, if you're not going to pick up pick up after your pit, you're not going to do it with your own leash or off leash if you're that type of owner. So I uh, just thoughts on from people around here to, to trial that in a couple of spots. It may be successful, it may not be, but I think that's a way to get some spaces for, for some of these dogs who need to rip around and not have to drive into the city to be able to do that. That one spot over at the reservoir where it was proposed to be fenced, that's a big spot, and there's probably no reason that that could be an off leash spot as well. So, you know, we'd have to look to admin to get their comments on that, but it's a big spot and it's over there and it's available. So, you know, that might fit the bill as well. Yeah, and even the, the big trails in behind, like the, the old square box at Beaumont used to be, you know, the trails in behind the golf course and all the way around, right? Like, I'd, I'd like to see if there are sections that we could potentially trial that and make sure obviously we notify everyone about it. But, um, you know, on 243, there's a long path there that dogs could be off leash. So I'm just trying to find a way to, to marry them. And the mayor is frowning here, so I'll, I'll jump to him. I'm scared. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, not, I'm not totally going to do it, but part of the when you and have to balance the, the need of the off-leash park with the need of the other users. Because there's lots of people that want to walk on the trails that don't want to be accosted by dogs off leash. Nice. And you're talking about me using those. So um, I would be unless unless there's a lot more detail, I'd be very hesitant to, to, to do that right now. To just pick some spots and go you're an off-leash for the winter and, 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 and the toy team and stuff. So I, I, I would need some more information before I can get behind that. You know, you mentioned the colonial and you look around. I, I go there quite often and there's really no help for you on the other side if a dog does come up to you, you know, other than the owner of the dog. So that wouldn't be a place where I would suggest it. Yeah, and, and, and I don't know what places, but I'd want to consult heavily before that was. So what I'm trying to do, the dog part was clearly identified as a need here from the community, right? We don't have the space right now. So if we don't, if we don't do this, we're and if someone's got another option. So again, we, we saw the success 
limited success of those. So um, if there's not support from council to do it, I, 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 I'm, that, that's fine with me. I just, I think we need to try and find a way to help with these, uh, the, the dog owners as well. Council staff. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and now I, I have big reservations about setting up sections of the trail to be off-leash dog areas. I and mean, yes, people certainly do let their dogs off-leash in some unknown times, but in those areas, but yeah, I'm concerned for, the, for all the other users there. The, certainly if I'm using the, if I'm riding a bike, I do not want to be worrying about an off-leash dog chasing me. That's, that, and they do. Um, that's, that's, I certainly have safety, all sorts of safety concerns. I, I, if we need more, um, I'm, I'm sympathetic to the idea that we need more off-leash, we need space, off-leash space for dogs. Um, but I, I support Council Monday's suggestion that we look at some of the alternate sites that, that have already been identified. Yeah. Councilman, you're correct. It's one of the things that I've, like, I think you've been, I think you're 100% accurate with, you know, when we can expect a fenced off area dedicated for a dog park is a long way away. <laughs> I don't think anyone disagrees with that. Um, one of the things I've seen, you know, traveling around in other communities is, you know, along a path, and, I've, and I don't know how they got there, but along the path, you'll see a sign, you're now entering an off leash dog area, and then you'll be too long, and then you're now exiting an off leash dog area. So it, it does work, and it has worked in other municipalities. Um, how they got there, I don't know. You know, it's consultation and this and that, but somewhere along the line, they were able to get to a point where there was some kind of a solution, um, and then they tried it. And I don't know how they got there. I would look to Edmund's expertise on figuring out how we would get there. Uh, when I look at the east side of town on that trail, on my road there often, um, I don't think I see a whole bunch of dogs on each other already. Um, you know, so it's one of those things that you know maybe we could. Uh, you know, I, I would support looking at something because it's going to be a long time before, in my view, it's going to be a long time before we have a spot that we're going to be able to say, this is where you can take your off-leash dogs. And it certainly is not going to measure up to some of the other options in the surrounding area that we're all the time compared to. So okay. um, that my support is there to look for options. Yeah, so I'm happy to, and maybe I, I got, well, not maybe, I, I got too specific there. And I think that, that intimidated folks. Um, I think what I'd like to see is um, for us to, for administration to go and take a look at some of the existing spaces that we have to potentially provide some other opportunities for off-leash spaces. Is there any? Yeah. Yeah. Is there anyone opposed to to that? Given the list of priorities that we're throwing at the administration, it says, it, it says long term. I'm I'm asking to to find some shorter term solutions. Yeah, the report does say we need some short some short term. And I'm okay, okay, going to sign off on it tonight. Yeah. Do you want me to? No, yeah. It's not, not, not what everyone's asking for. Well, maybe I sort of was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes Fair enough. Okay, I'm, I'm, happy to, yeah, I'm happy to move on. Uh, we're, we're, how, we're at time check. We're at 7 o'clock. Um, are there other items, things that people wanted to bring forward? I've got Council Danlock here. Just trying to get a gauge. Uh, short one, Mr. Chair. I would suggest maybe on uh, page 220, the capital plan $219, the items that are listed here, update park furniture $10,000, enhanced park, open space vegetation $15, upgrade outdoor sport facilities $25 on the next page, um, upgrade baseball diamonds $10,000. I would suggest we have administration read those four items back to budget to be debated accordingly at that time, rather than take any, any time tonight to do it. There are four items there that are identified by the report as being a short-term item that have some merit, but I would suggest we debate it at, at budget as opposed to tonight, those four items. Okay. Yeah, it's short-term. Yeah, it's good to see what was in mind, but I think it really is too soon to be making those. Okay. Um, given that we're 705 here, um, looks like we're, we're closed. Can I um, have a motion to accept this report uh, and presentation as information? Councillor Stout? So moved, Mr. Chair. Call the vote. Aye. Good discussion. Uh, I'm going to call our recess here. You want to go on camera and then recess? Okay, so uh, we've got two items in, in camera coming up here. Um, so closed session, item A here. Um, 
due to uh, so regional items up there, regional transit EMRB initiatives, close session pursuant to section 21 of the Freedom of Information Protection and Privacy Act, harmful to intergovernmental relations, and pursuant to section 24 of the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy advice from officials. Can I have a motion to go on camera? Council, sorry, Your Worship, and uh, call the vote. Right. Thanks for your time. Appreciate Thank you sitting through all that. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Great report. Thanks. All the information. My head still hurts. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. I love it.